Ladies and gentlemen, additive manufacturing is the rise of the next industrial revolution. It has attracted many people, researchers, industry, and policymakers, including President Obama, who praised 3D printing in his State of Union. The next revolution in manufacturing is made right here in America. We can get that done. New workers are mastering the 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. Additive manufacturing is forward thinking. It's out of the box thinking. With additive manufacturing, we can design beyond imagination. We can be more creative, more productive, more efficient, and more flexible. As reported to President Obama, additive manufacturing or 3D printing is a disruptive technology that can change the entire manufacturing enterprise by 2030. What, what is additive manufacturing? In a simple language, it's a layer by layer manufacturing. It starts with your idea. You need to digitize your idea. Some pre-processing is required to come up with digitized slices that is required for a 3D printing machine. Depending on your application, Depending on the material, you need to actually choose one of the seven classes of additive manufacturing. You can take your parts out. You need to actually do some sort of post-processing for cleaning, for heat treatments, for increasing mechanical strength. But in a nutshell, moving from art to part would be much, much faster. As Pearl mentioned, additive manufacturing is 27 years old started with the invention of charcoal, a technology called a stereolithography, used to actually make parts from photopolymers. It followed by the invention of Scott Kampf, developed a technology called fused deposition modeling for making parts from thermoplastic. A group of researchers in MIT developed a technology so-called 3D printing at that year, 1993, used for making parts from plaster. However, the same technology, two-step technology, can be used for making ceramic parts. In Los Alamos lab in 1996, two technologies were developed called laser consolidations or selective laser zintering for making metallic parts. Estratasys in 2007 introduced a technology called polyjet, which is based on material jetting. We would be able to actually make parts from multiple polymers. Just last year, a company in the England called MCAR introduced a very fascinating technology based on lamination. We can actually make very colorful, fantastic parts out of office papers. We would hear about next generations of additive manufacturing in years to come. One of them could be, in fact, a technology that we are working here at Waterloo which enable us to not only make parts with complex shapes, but, al but also control the internal properties of parts. We are talking about 3D varying density, and so on and so forth. Given this wide range of materials and technologies, you can imagine, 3D printing can be useful in any sectors. Back in 1988, the technology was used for rapid prototyping for design verification. In 1995, the technology was used for uh, rapid casting and rapid tooling. In 2002, the technology was adopted by aerospace and automotive industries to make polymeric models. In 2009, the application of 3D printing in orthopedic got dominated. In fact, today, ladies and gentlemen, we have more than 12,000 hip and knee implants implanted in humans. In 2001, the industry was customized for jewelry and cloth industries. The same year, a company in Hollywood called Legacy utilize 3D printing for making costumes for special effects. Same year, we actually observe application of 3D printing in making parts for aerospace area, again, metallic parts. 
General Electric is announcing that by 2020, more than 100,000 parts of a typical airplane would be 3D printed. This year, a company called Chef 3D from England would release the first 3D printing machine for making candies, chocolates, and some special cakes. As a person who tried their product, it's so delicious. We'll hear about the application of 3D printing in conformal and non-planar electronics. We would hear about, in fact, application of 3D printing in building industry, specifically cemented building. In 2018, we'll hear about application of 3D printing in bionic or biodegradable implants. And last but not least, in 2030, we would hear about applications of 3D printing for printing full organs. And also, with the help of advanced robotics, people are talking about in situ biofabrications. It's not a science fiction. As a matter of fact, we are receiving some scientific papers. People are trying to use advanced robotics to do some sort of, in fact, bone injury uh, um, uh, repair in, in, in surgical room. All right, but why? why? What is the motivation behind all these interests? Additive manufacturing significantly reduces the production time, thus reducing the cost. It would be a very effective way to make parts from multiple materials. It would be a, an economical way and viable alternative to, to make parts with very complex assemblies. Ladies and gentlemen, if you take a look at this picture, everything, including a spherical object, has been printed in one shot. Normally, as Pearl mentioned, we are seeing some better mechanical Im improvement, mechanical strength, when we are talking about ceramic and metallic parts, 3D printed. Market size is growing very fast. A technology in the range of $150 million has been grown to something in the range of $3.5 billion just last year. We are talking about just the market associated with the machines and materials. We are not talking about value-added propositions. Just this morning, I received a report claiming that that prediction for 2018 is much, much higher. People are talking about a market size in the range of $16.5 billion four years from now. Public interest is skyrocketing. If you take a look at Google Trends, by 2011, it was so flat, but over the last two, three years, it has been increased 40 or 50 times. Government funds have been allocated for 3D printing. Specifically, the US and China have significantly invested in this technology to bring 3D printing to the mainstream manufacturing and adopt it to universities and schools, including kindergartens. Unfortunately, Canada is not on the map. Economic benefits and societal impact of technology are tremendous. Uh, as reported by McKinsey Global Institute, the potential global impact of the technology would be $550 billion by 2025 per year. The technology is environmentally friendly. Virtually, we have no waste in 3D printing technologies. As reported by the US Department of Energy, we can actually have 50% energy saving compared to the compar counterpart conventional, con conventional technique. The technology, I'm oh, sorry, oh, it goes just forward. The technology is in fact, um, would be very viable for low volume manufacturing. Therefore, so it promotes, um, um, in fact, uh, um, 3D printing or low volume uh, manufacturing in, uh, oh, thank you very much, low volume manufacturing in local communities, resulting in reduced, uh, in fact, uh, warehousing, packaging, 
and transportation. Opportunities are tremendous, trends are positive, the future looks very bright. So it increase, the technology actually will provide an increased pace of innovation and creativity among all generations. It offers unique solutions for some of the aging population issues and energy issues. We can actually have lightweight but stronger customized products. We will actually see explosion of businesses. Specifically, that would be a vast opportunity for entrepreneurs to move from idea to prototype to the final product. We will see new AM, in fact, supply, uh, sup, uh, new AM system suppliers because of the fact that some of the key patents would be expired very soon. We would have new workflow and, in fact, uh, industry standards. We would see some involvement of large companies in this business. Hewlett Packard would have a major announcement in June 2014. There are some rumors that Google and Apple are working very actively with high level of secrecy on this area. Like any other technology, 3D printing are facing with some threats. Legal liability and copyright issues could be some of them. There would be many, may probably incompetent people getting to the business of design and manufacturing that could create some sort of tort cases. But I would like to actually take a sentence from um, Jonathan Kopp, vice president of Stratasys, who testified before the US Congress just a few weeks ago. He says, the biggest threat is unnecessary restriction regulations proposed by governments preventing people to creatively develop products, L leave the 3D printing technology accessible to all, like the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, additive manufacturing is a game-changing technology. Thank you very much.